About a year ago, I made a couple of quick prototype versions of this step stool. The idea was to make them without using a table saw or biter saw or a router, just minimal handheld power tools, a drill, a jigsaw, and a circular saw. I made this first one with a two by four and rough cut lap joints. The second one was made with one by fours and fake lap joints. Both of these are super sturdy and I'll mention a couple of the techniques I used in these in this video. But this time, I decided to make a much more sophisticated version using three quarter inch thick boards and real half lap joints cut on my table saw. This version is just as strong as these, but it's like half the weight. Honestly, this step stool is one of the most useful projects I've ever made. I use it all the time. The handle makes it really easy to grab and just take it wherever you need on a moment's notice. You don't have to haul out a step ladder or something. Plus, you can use it to stabilize yourself if you need to. It's intentionally a low height, which makes it surprisingly useful for day-to-day -day reaching tasks, whether it's a high shelf in a cabinet or just to change a light bulb. And of course you can make it whatever height you want, but honestly, I've discovered that about a 10 inch rise or so works perfectly. Most of the boards for this project are gonna be three and a half inches wide, but I didn't want to buy one by fours, which are three and a half inches wide off the rack and use those because I wanted to square up the edges. Usually the edges are kind of rough and this way I can straighten out the whole board. So these are one by fives, they're four and a half inches wide. So first I could just joint one edge and then I can flip it around and cut it to the width that I need. I should be able to make this whole project using just two of these six foot long boards. But for now, I'm only gonna rip one of these boards down to its width. These will be the pieces for the legs and the framing of the stool. I just happened to look over at my dust collector and notice that it was full. Actually, I caught this a little sooner than I usually do. Usually it's all the way to the top and it's not sucking in any more sawdust. I try to be as careful as I can dumping this out so that I don't get sawdust all over the place. It really has a way of spreading. If all of your sawdust is pine and you don't have a lot of other garbage in there, you could use this as compost in your garden. I don't usually do that because there's usually a lot of other stuff that I sweep up in that. Not to mention certain types of woods and the, I guess the tannins in them or whatever can be harmful for your garden. Like walnut is notorious. You don't want to put walnut shavings into your garden. I like working out in the sunlight when I can, mostly for kind of the rough cutting part of the job. When I get into some more finer details, I kind of like to move it inside. I've got that little stop block thing I can adjust on my miter gauge so that I can cut out equal length pieces for the legs and for the stretchers holding them in place. For this project, I made really detailed plans so that I can follow along and make sure I got all my measurements correct. And by the way, if you'd like a copy of those plans, I'll include a link down in the description where you can download those for free. As I was cutting those, I noticed that one of those leg pieces had kind of a bad spot there. And I'm afraid to use that because I think that knot there is just going to pop out. And that's going to be right where the half lap joints go. So I just decided to cut another piece. I'll use that one for tests and whatnot. It's always good to have a little extra to run tests. As far as joints go, a lap joint is one of the strongest joints you can make. You get good face grain to face grain contact on each piece and it's a great way to join two pieces together and keep them all at the same thickness. I'm gonna set up almost my entire dado stack. The way this works is you have two eight inch blades, one on each side of the stack. And in between those is sandwiched a bunch of these chippers that just have a tooth on each side. 
And these come in different thicknesses so that you can kind of dial in that stack to whatever width you need it to cut. When you use a large stack of data blades, you might not be able to put that little washer in place that you usually use to hold in a saw blade, but it doesn't really matter. You can put just the, the nut on there and it'll hold it down just fine. I think that washer is mainly to prevent wobbling on larger blades. This thing is pretty handy. This is called a fit finder from Microjig and it does one job really well. It finds the center point of a board. So I just put the board under this sliding thing and drop that down on it. And then that other part there, the horizontal part shows the exact halfway point so that I can move that over to my dado stack and raise it up to where it's just barely touching that. And this is perfect for half lap joists because finding that exact halfway point is really important so that the two pieces match up and that they're flush. I'll include an affiliate link down in the description if you want to buy one of these things and give me some money. Otherwise, you can just Google it. <laughs> First, I'll run a test on two boards so that I can make sure that the blades are set to the exact height. Here you can see how those fit together. That depth looks perfect. And now I can cut out the full half lap joint, which is the width of a board. That's because the two boards are gonna fit together at a right angle, the leg and the stretcher. I've set up my rip fence to stop this cut at its final width. And as always, I like to mention that it's okay to use your rip fence in combination with the miter gauge when you're making rabbits and dados or any other kinds of non-through cut. Uh, it's perfectly safe and it's a normal practice. What's not safe is to use your miter gauge and rip fence in combination to make a cross cut because there you've got an off cut piece that can get wedged between the blade and the fence and kick back, throw it back right back at you. I'm testing here to see how they fit together at a right angle. And it looks like I need to make that lap joint just a little bit wider. So I'll slide my fence over just a hair. And here's how those two pieces are gonna fit together nice and flush. Now I can glue together the two leg assemblies. When you're using half lap joints, just make sure that you get that glue spread evenly, not just on the face surface, but also on that shoulder there where the two pieces are going to meet. Another nice thing about lap joints is that they're just self squaring, so it really helps to square up this assembly. Plus, I just think it's a really nice, clean look. If you're curious about how I made those half lap joints on my prototypes without a table saw, the first one I made using two by fours and a circular saw, and I just cut a, made a series of cuts and then just kind of banged those pieces out of there with a hammer and then smoothed it up with a chisel. On the one with the faux half lap joints, I used three quarter inch lumber and just cut out pieces to kind of form the shape of the lap joint. Once those two leg assemblies are dry, I'll clean them up over on my table saw. I'll just shave a hair off of each edge to remove any glue squeeze out and to ensure that they're both exactly the same size. Now I can cut out a couple of notches for the stretchers that'll join these two assemblies together. After I made my first couple of passes, I noticed I had a problem. 
Okay, so look what happened here on this board. I started getting this piece here just blowing out and that's because of the dado blade spinning this way and this being end grain is just pushing it right out of there. You can tell nothing happened over here because that's the face grain going this way. On this piece, when I ran it through with the blade entering this side, the end grain, and then going through that way, it worked out fine. I didn't get any of that chip out. So what I did on this one from here over to here was use a backer board and that seemed to prevent most of that. You know, I'll just put this on the inside of the stool so you won't even see it. All right, that one turned out much, much better. I'll probably sand these down a little bit smoother before I assemble it. Here's that first one I did with the, <laughs> the tear out. So, I don't know. It's never a project without at least one oops. Uh, make that two oopses. I just caught this one. This is a bigger oops. Do you know what I did? That's not where I want the notches to go, here on each side. They're supposed to go here so that I can attach the stretchers to it. Just like I actually have in my design where it even says right there, cut shoulders after the leg assemblies are glued up. Has a nice little notch right there. That's what I was supposed to cut. What do I do? I cut the notch up here. I have no idea what's going on when, when I do things like that. At any rate, it's not that big of a deal because I made this a little bit bigger, a little bit higher than my last stool. So that's three eighths of an inch. It could be that big of a deal. What I'm gonna do is just cut this off here, even it out, and then I'll just cut down this stretcher board to match that size. And I still, I'll still have to cut those notches out, but uh, that was dumb. That was like super dumb especially when I have the plans right there that I designed and had looked over them time and time again. You know, of course, I don't have to use these dado blades to make those notches either since they're on those shoulders. You know, technically you could make a cut down this way and then this way, just a shoulder cut using a jigsaw. If you have a bandsaw, it would work out really well. I'm not so sure though with a jigsaw that I could keep that line as straight and level as I need it to be for the stretcher to fit on there nice and neatly in a as a half lap joint. I mean, maybe I could do that and maybe I'm overthinking that a little bit. And that's, you know, that's probably the way I should have done this, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm sticking with my dado blades here because I like the way they make a nice flat shoulder there. I mean, that's the thing about woodworking. There's always, I just dropped that little spacer down in there. Uh, well, the nice thing about woodworking is there's always different ways to do anything. You know, you could use your router to to make this, I think. You could use you could use a handsaw. There's a lot of guys who are saying, just use a handsaw, that'd be a lot easier. And it's probably right. <laughs> but I've I've committed myself to using this dado stack on this project. Oh, I gotta get that thing out of there. All right, back with the blade in there. I feel like as long as I've done woodworking, the whole experience has been just, just dumb things. Doing dumb things is kind of just like part of my experience in woodworking. I remember one time I couldn't get cuts on this saw. And it just, uh, man, the, the cuts were horrible. I couldn't push it through the blade. And, and every time I would push a board through it, it would want to wander. I'm like, damn, what is going on? I thought this blade has got to be dull. Something's wrong, but I persevered. And I, I made a few cuts like that. And I thought, okay, something's wrong. This is not right. Yeah, what did I do? I had the blade flipped around <laughs> backwards. 
No, my, my first thing, my first thought was, oh, it's just a dull blade. No, have the damn thing in there backwards. It's going all wonky. <laughs> Really, all this channel needs is just better thumbnails. <laughs> okay, let's put my throat pipe back in. This. Man, if I ever had to work to a deadline, <laughs> I, would be in, I would be in big trouble. So I gotta even this out. I used to, you know, I used to have a deadline. Used to be like every Friday I had to post a video. I had to have, a, it was a project video every Friday. Oh, those were the days. <laughs> okay, let's get back to this thing. I'm gonna cut that thing off. I need to cut a three quarter inch rabbit on the ends of each of those stretchers. I'll clamp that scrap board to my rip fence so that I can cut these in one pass. That way I can make that fence actually touch the blade without damaging my real fence, which I've done in the past. And then I'll cut a wide half lap in the middle of one of those stretchers for the handle to sit in. And this is the long board I'm going to use for the handle. I'll cut the other half of that lap joint on the end of it. I'll make this lap joint a little bit longer so I can cut it down to size. Before I assemble the base, I'll make sure to sand everything nice and smooth. Now I can just glue these stretchers into place using those rabbit joints. I think the difference between the rabbit joint and a lap joint is that the lap joint is all kind of on the same plane. Each board in a rabbit joint runs in a different axis, I guess. And as always, rabbit joints make squaring up projects really easy. Now I could rip that other board and cut it down into three pieces that I can glue together edge to edge for the platform. And this is just a matter of spreading a thin layer of glue along the edges and clamping them together with pipe clamps. I'll put a clamp right on each of those seams to keep them flush. I thought I'd get away with using a pipe clamp on that top, but as I check it with a straight edge, the whole panel is kind of bowing. So instead, I'll just use my clamping calls. These boards will definitely keep it nice and flat. I intentionally made this panel oversized so that I could cut it down to an exact fit once it was all glued up. I made a note of that in the plans. When you're squaring up a panel like this, what you want to do is cut one edge on the rip fence and then turn the panel so that you're cutting the adjacent side using the miter gauge. This will make sure it's square that you're not repeating kind of a parallelogram by just using the rip fence. To cut out the curved shape for the handle, I'll mark where I want that arc to begin and end, and I'll mark the midpoint. Then it's just a matter of freehand drawing an arc on each side. 
I know a lot of engineering types who are watching this probably bristling at how imprecise this is, but I think it's one of the things that separates traditional woodworking from digital woodworking. It's the letting go of precision and embracing the uniqueness of each piece you make. This handle can be any shape you want it to be. The fact that it isn't a perfectly symmetrical arc on each side adds to its value because the shape I'm making here can't be repeated exactly. Don't be afraid to embrace these artistic opportunities. The goal of my projects isn't to produce factory perfection, but rather to make pieces with individual character that allow for human flaws. I'll set up my drill press to drill a large finger hole in the top of this handle. You don't need a drill press to do this. I've drilled this same hole on the other two using just my handheld drill. The drill press just has a lot more power and just makes this a lot easier. And I'll use my jigsaw to cut out that shape. While I'm cutting this out, I wanted to remind you to check out my award-winning monthly newsletter called Notes from the Shop. It's in its second year now, and it gets delivered the first Friday of every month. It's jam-packed with woodworking advice, tips, life observations, stories, reader mail, projects, videos, special offers. It's really a great newsletter. I put a ton of work into each month. It's Something you can just take five minutes out of your day to read and enjoy, and it'll leave you with nothing but happy, positive vibes. No doom scrolling on my newsletter. <laughs> Sign up for free over at notesfromsteve.com. Now back to my panel with my sacrificial fence back in place. I can cut out a rabbit along all four edges. I'll test fit this into the whole leg assembly. It's tight, but it's a nice fit. I need to cut out a notch in this rabbit for the handle to fit into. Since that rabbit is only 3 8 of an inch thick, I actually think the easiest way to do this will be using a handsaw to cut that shoulder. And once I have that cut, I'll just use a chisel to carefully pop that piece out. And I'll do one more test fit and clean up any areas that are just a little too tight or don't fit well. I'll cut that handle piece down to its final length. The end grain on the bottom of these boards, especially since this is just pine wood, are prone to splitting out whenever you slide this stool around. So to prevent that, I'm gonna use my router to cut a chamfer along the edge of each of those legs. This is just a small 45 degree bevel. Next, I'll use a round over bit to ease over all of the edges of the handle so that they're not so sharp when you grab a hold of it. 
and especially inside the finger hold. Now I can do a final assembly. First I'll glue in the handle and clamp it into place. I'm putting some scrap boards beneath the clamp so that they don't dent the wood. And then I can glue and drop that platform into place. I really like the look of the joinery on this version. So rather than paint it, I'm gonna apply two coats of tongue oil finish. This will give it a nice earthy natural look and provide a little bit of protection too. Plus tongue oil is really easy to apply. Just flood the surface, wipe it on, wait 10 minutes and then wipe off the excess. You can build it up by waiting 24 hours between finishes and then buffing each one down to a real nice satin finish. The only downside to an oil finish like this is that it's a maintenance finish. In other words, it's something that you will have to reapply every so often, every year or so. But let's be honest, you're not going to do that. <laughs> I know I'm not. 